Hi, don't know if this has been uh, shown in the morning or the afternoon, so good day. My name is Enrique Mendizabal. I am uh, the founder and director of On Think Tanks, which is a platform to, that seeks to study and support uh, policy research centers around the world. And I've been asked to uh, give you a short talk about the future of researchers. Uh, the exact title is How Would a Shift in Research Practice Applied in the Social and Digital Environment Impact on the Capabilities of Researchers in the Future? Uh, it took me a while to figure out what to say about this title, so I've come up with a, with a short presentation that I'll share also in writing that I hope you, you enjoy. I think that uh, new researchers in the future will need at least three skills. They, they're going to have to be very good researchers, that's a given. They're going to have to be good managers, at least at the level of research projects. So they have to be good managers in, in respect to their projects. And they also have to be very good communicators, again, at least internally within their teams and within their organization, but increasingly towards their intended audiences. Simon Maxwell, who is former director of the Overseas Development Institute, would have said that they also have to be great networkers and great fixers, uh, referring to the need to understand and operate the political levels of change. So they, it's not enough to have a good idea and share it. You've got to know how to get your idea in the right place and uh, to get the right people to listen to your idea. These two, these two last skills, if you want, um, I accept, can be much harder for some people to master and they could go beyond the standard job description expected from a researcher. A good research, good management and a good communication should be, in my view, non-negotiable. So what about being good communicators? Um, I'm going to focus on this, on this issue for, for this talk. And I think there are three aspects to being a good communicator as, as a researcher. First, researchers have to, have to have very good interpersonal communication skills. This is the day-to-day -day communication skills. They have to they, these, have, these are harder to master, um, I feel, for some people, but they can be taught and should be taught at university. Often graduates arrive at a think tank without those skills and the first thing they need to learn is, is how to communicate their ideas to their peers, to their funders, to, to their immediate audiences. But graduates should be able to develop and communicate their arguments clearly to their peers and to others who are not familiar with their work or with the subjects that they've studied. And this, this should be basic. They must be very strong editors of their own work. Uh, again, not something that is encouraged from researchers. You know, good at running a regression and presenting the table that came out of your uh, software, but not necessarily good at coming up with an argument to support that regression or to explain that regression and then being able to edit it in a way that different audiences will understand. You know, these are crucial, I think, not only to influence others about the merits of our ideas, but also to lead or work in teams which increasingly in research centers around the world is going to be with people with different interests and different skills. The second aspect to uh, research communication is that researchers must, must have a very good knowledge of all the communication channels and tools available to them, as well as how to use them. This doesn't mean that they should have the same skills as a professional publication manager or a professional events manager or a media officer or a digital communication manager. I don't know how to set up a, a pretty complicated and, uh, and modern website, but I've learned to ask. I've learned to you know, find out what needs to be done and I'd like somebody else who knows how to do it to do it for me. But they need to, and they, like I've learned, they, and they should know about and understand these roles and the tools that can be used in each of these communication channels. Right? So they should understand what a publications officer is supposed to do. They should understand what a media officer is supposed to do they can do and they should be able to have a conversation with them that makes them a, a, an informed and an educated client or an educated partner. They should too be able to produce at least some of the most basic communication tools under each channel. So for instance they should be able to do a literature review, a policy brief, a working paper fast. They should be able to write a blog post, they should be able to manage a Twitter handle or produce a basic static data visualization using, using tools like Infogram that are available for anybody. They should be able to set up a Google Hangout to stream a workshop, although I wasn't able to do it today, so I might edit that out. Um, they should be able to produce a public event and write it to report and conduct, it, conduct a short interview for radio or TV, um, and even record and edit a podcast or a video. And these are tools that are increasingly uh, popular 
and young researchers were going to have to learn them before they enter a think tank or as soon as they enter a research organization. Now this is not a message my generation would like to hear, but it, I think it's uh, not far-fetched to expect that young researchers, certainly those entering the market right now, um, won't have those skills already when they arrive. The third point is that new researchers should be expected to have the capacity to make strategic choices about how to use the various channels and tools at their disposal. And so we've identified, we've got publications, we've got events, we have uh, digital communication uh, tools, we have media. How do you combine these different products in a way that maximizes the impact of your work? And here's where the concept of communication as orchestra can be of help. Um, I introduced this topic in a workshop in Bangladesh and I can share more, more details about them uh, through the organizers of, of this event. Um, but the idea is, is, is not, I think, I don't think it's too complicated. So ideally, at a research center, there will be a head of communications in charge of this. But in reality, most communication activities in research centers around the world are and will be conducted at the level of the research project and by researchers themselves. So researchers must know how to maximize the impact that the various communication tools they have at their disposal uh, can have by combining them, by putting them together, very much in the same way as a conductor would do with an orchestra, put together different instruments to, to create music. The objective is quite simple. They must keep the audience engaged, or in terms more appropriate to us, we must keep our ideas on the public agenda for as long as possible. In preparation to a possible, and only possible, let's be honest, possible window of opportunity opening up. And so you want to put your idea, you want to put your argument, you want to put your suggestions or your recommendations in the public space, you want to make sure they are on the agenda, that they're being discussed, they're being, they're being, they're being considered by those who can make decisions uh, at the time when the window of opportunity opens, a crisis uh, emerges, there is, a, there is funding, there is political will, and they're looking for that idea, your idea should be there. This capacity to make strategic choices can be taught, but it's more likely to be developed through practice. And this means that research cannot be completely separate from communication. The best way of teaching a, a young researcher, a new researcher, how to make strategic use of all these communication tools is to actually put them in the place of using them. So to make them work alongside communicators or to ensure that their job description isn't just research but includes the role of communicator as well. So there's something about the disruptive role of digital channels and tools that affects this particularly. And so I'm going to focus on the digital aspect of uh, research communication. So to achieve this exposure, to maximize exposure of ideas, digital channels and tools offer opportunities that very few researchers today are taking full advantage of. And, and this is, I think, across the board. So I'm not suggesting that this only happens in developing countries. This happens across the board. Of course, there's a lot more use of digital to tools in, in Europe and the US than there is in Latin America and Africa, but um, I, I don't think this is a situation where, where one is completely behind the other. Now, digital channels make it possible to structure the strategic communication of uh, uh, the strategic combination of communication tools. For example, um, a simple and free Eventbrite, Eventbrite page or a WordPress site can allow a small team of researchers or even a single researcher to bring together a range of publications, videos, engagement activities such as events, online discussions with Twitter or Facebook, and efforts to reach out to the media into one place. And, and that makes that space quite powerful and, uh, and, uh, and robust when it comes to engaging with policymakers, when it comes to engaging with the media or, or, or other audiences. There are digital communication tools for pretty much every communication objective, for organizing events, for sending out invitations, for writing and publishing, for writing event reports, for announcements, hosting events, monitoring, the impact of our research, etc. In fact, there are digital tools for almost every research and management objective as well. It's possible to run an entire research project and even an entire research organization online using digital tools, and most of them free digital However, this can, this can come as a cost to old and current research cultures. And here's where the disruptive nature of digital comes in. Now, I could talk about this for hours, but I'm going to focus on one aspect of this disruption that I think is important and it's probably uh, overlooked. This one relates to the capacity of researchers to take full advantage of the instruments in this orchestra. So 
how do you make sure you take full advantage of every single communication tool you have at your disposal? Now, to be able to do that, I think the researcher needs to uh, become much more comfortable with criticism and even with being wrong. It's not a direct link between the things I've just said, but I'll, I'll get back to that. So I think researchers need to be a lot more comfortable with receiving criticism, accepting criticism, even accepting that they'll sometimes often be wrong and just getting on with it. Now, digital communications um, and digital research are not separate things anymore. They, they're they part of the same whole. One can generate digital communication content while doing research. For example, you can film or record interviews with your informants in your research project. There's no need to take, you know, take down notes and then transcribe those notes into, into a document and the document then becomes a paper and then you film the people you want to film to illustrate your arguments. You can film them while you're doing the research. Um, and one can do research while doing communications. You can, you can film and stream a, a, an event and use the recordings to uh, and the event itself to gather information that you were hoping to gather from key informants. Digital is also ongoing. It forces the researcher, ex expects the researcher, to communicate right from the start. Um, I think the first publication of every research project should be, this is what I want to research. It should be a publication that says, this is what I want to research. Look out for it. It's coming. Digital is also open. Research can no longer be done in private, away from the prying eyes of your funders, of your peers, and of your audiences. You can't take money from someone, from, from a funding agency or, or from your organization, and go away for six months or a year and then come back with a book. You know, if you're going to communicate through digital tools, if you're going to do research uh, using digital tools, you're going to have to be engaging constantly along the way through the process. And you're going to have to be open about what you're doing, you're going to have to share. Because digital is also reciprocal. The most popular digital tools and most useful punish broadcast only users. So if you, uh, you just send out information and you say, read me, but you're not actually engaging with people, you know, asking questions, engaging with them, it's going to be hard for you to take full advantage of them. They demand engagement. This culture extends to how people share data, how they share ideas, and how they share advice online. Researchers are now potential members. And this is interesting. Researchers are now potential members of an infinite number of epistemic communities that can pop up in response to a simple tweet asking a question or for help. So in the past, you know, we wanted to study agriculture extension in Malawi, or we wanted to study the use of drones in uh, agricultural research in Peru. And you might have to seek funding to set up a community of practice around this issue. Nowadays, you go online, you ask a question on Twitter, and you have a good network. If you're invested in your network, you'll get an immediate response from a number of people. You can actually develop right there a pop-up STEM community or pop-up community of practice on the subject and solve a problem together. Digital is also flexible. We hear stories all the time um, about cyberbullying. We hear stories about huge fails that haunt people forever. But I think these are exceptions to the rule. For the most part, digital allows researchers to engage with their audiences in a way that contributes to co-generation of knowledge. I think generally, it allows researchers to share ideas and receive very useful feedback. It lets them go back uh, on their analysis and correct mistakes. And digital tools make it easier to access information which is invaluable for research. You know, as you share information, you access more information, you take that information with you, you can go back in your process, you can go back in your, in your what I'm going to study first publication, you can go back in your, uh, in your tweets, you can go back in your, your Facebook engagements, and you can accept uh, that you might have made a mistake, you can accept that you might not have a, had all the information. I think digital allows this. It's, it's, it's a lot more informal, it's a lot more flexible than people expect it to be. To me, this means that Researchers need to be open to criticism. If you're going to put your ideas out there early on uh, and you want to be able to continue through a, a long-term research process, you're going to have to accept that some of these ideas will be criticized. They might be wrong, and so you just have to continue. And they might be right, so you have to take them on. And this, in a way, means that they must learn to take themselves and their community a little bit less seriously. And this might be harder uh, said than done. Um, so it might be easier said than done. 
Maybe the new generation of researchers will find this easier. They will have grown up using these tools and with different ex experiences of privacy. They will know that it's possible to edit a blog post and add a note to clarify an er earlier correction. They will know that by asking for help publicly, uh, it doesn't mean that their ideas will be stolen. They might actually be promoted. Um, and, um, and I think it will be obvious to them that a tweet with a link to a blog that has a link to a working paper is going to be much more effective than a working paper on its own. And this is going to be research communications 101 for them. And we should encourage that, that view of how to engage with your audiences. Now, as a way of concluding this very short talk, I should say that all of this has implications on research organizations themselves. So the culture of, uh, of research, researchers change, and the way they engage with their own peers and their funders and their audiences change, so it has to have an effect on the way that research organizations uh, organize themselves. So changes in the research culture will affect higher practices. You'll hire different types of, uh, of researchers, different types of communications. The roles and responsibilities of different members of the staff will also change. Um, you know, we now have, you know, we now strive to have uh, a team of researchers, a team of communicators, and a team of managers. I don't know if that's going to be the case in, in, the, in the near future. It might just be that you'll have people who actually do conduct the, those three roles at the same time. Uh, you might have uh, people who are more or less senior, not depending on whether they're researchers or belong to the central services, but um, because of the contribution they make to the objectives of the organization. Leadership roles are going, to, are going to change in particular, and therefore governance structures will change as a consequence. You'll have different individuals involved in senior management, you'll have different individuals involved in, in the boards of, uh, of these organizations as well. Now, the research project output change to reflect, to reflect this uh, idea of digital first, then the research project design will change and, then, and the way you manage these projects will change as well. They, these will have to adapt. This will have consequences on how funding is sought, how it's awarded and how it's managed. And if funding changes, if funding models change, then inevitably so will the business models of the research organizations. So I think it's uh, fun times ahead. It's uh, very exciting and very interesting. And uh, I hope you enjoy that. I'll share the transcript uh, with you um, I've already done it, so you should have it with you if you want it. And if you have any questions, don't don't uh, hesitate to ask me. I'm uh, at on Think Tanks in Twitter and uh, onthinktanks.org if you want to look at our website. Thank you very much.